Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Jesus, glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I bring you greetings from the city of David where the love of God reigns, where dreams come true, where legends like you and I are born, and the testimony you are going to share tomorrow is being worked on by God right now. And I also bring you greetings from my, my sweetheart, uh, my sugar babe, uh, Pastor Shiju. Uh, shall we pray, please? Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with the hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord our God. Hosanna in the heart. Yes. Eternal Lord of Ages, we bless your holy name. We lift up your name, knowing that once we lift up your name, you will draw all men even unto you. King of glory, our gathering is unto you. Please speak to us, encourage us, bless us, transform our lives, heal us, deliver us. At the end of this service, let us know that we have had a glorious encounter with you. And please let every one of us have our own personal testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, tonight, um, we're going to continue our book review. But please remember that also tonight, we're having a holy communion service, which is the first that we're having in the year 2021. So I'd like to encourage you to please uh, get your bread and your wine on the side, because at a point we are going to celebrate sweet communion and have this closed dinner 
with our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. And I'm sure that every one of us will have awesome testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. For a while, we've been looking at uh, Psalm 91, which is so, so very important these days. It's a covenant of peace, and it's God's comprehensive insurance policy for his children in such a time as this. And it's an all-risk insurance policy, and the premium has been fully paid by our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. And scripture cannot be broken. We believe that it guarantees a hedge of all-round protection for his children. And of course, it comes with a lot of other benefits. My prayer is that those blessings will be ours in Jesus' mighty name. Out of Psalm 91, we've written eight books. Uh, the first one being God's Comprehensive Insurance Policy. Uh, we've reviewed that one. Uh, the second one, Deliverance from the Snare of the Fowler. And currently, we are reviewing uh, Between the Mother Hen and Bad Mamas. I'd like to read um, Psalm 91 and verse 1 to 12, 1 to 4. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. But the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word in Jesus' mighty name. Now, for a while, we've been studying verse 4 that says, He shall cover thee with his feathers. He shall cover thee with his feathers. But I'd like to um, backtrack a little bit and please ask each and every one of us that all these teachings are online and the books are available both in church and online at various platforms. Um, we need to be sure that in this time, we are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. All these benefits are for those that are constantly dwelling, not going out of the presence of God, but dwelling constantly in the secret place of the Most High. It's the only way God can protect you. You need to come under cover. And that is why it's so important that we're looking at verse 4 that says, he shall cover thee with his um, feathers. And from previous studies, we learned that the difference between a physical and a spiritual covering is, is great. We learned from various examples in scriptures that the efficacy of spiritual covering, which we are discussing tonight, is always better because it has its root in our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. It's better for you to be operating under spiritual covering that covers not only spiritual matters, but even physical, than to just concentrate on your physical covering, which we learned is not adequate. You cannot look to man for help. Your focus can only be to God. So in as much as physical covering is important, Spiritual covering is more important because it's all encompassing. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 21, 31, Proverbs 21, 31, it says that the horse is prepared for battle, but safety is of the Lord. As much as human covering is important, no amount of human cover can completely guarantee total protection or deliverance from the onslaught of the rulers of the darkness of this world. The Bible tells us that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness, rulers of the darkness of this world, whose manifestations most times are unseen. They can penetrate through closed doors. They can penetrate through bulletproof cars right to king's palaces and fortresses. And of course, you know that that was what happened at the night of Passover in Egypt, in the book of Exodus. And such is the case with this global pandemic called COVID-19 that is currently plaguing the world. Our God will see the end of it in Jesus' mighty name. We have heard of cases where in spite of all precautions, 
instructions taken, he still manages to penetrate and ravage families and has unleashed a reign of terror and fear. But our soldiers of the Lord in the Lord's army, we must not give in to fear. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 1 7, 2 Timothy 1 7, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You need to realize that the Bible also tells you in Colossians 3 3, Colossians 3 3, that we are dead and our lives are hidden with Christ inside God. So we are fully protected. And my prayer is that none of us will break the hedge so that a serpent will bite us in Jesus' mighty name. So greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world or anything that's coming from outside. And my prayer is that starting from today, you will activate the power that is within you, the power of the Holy Spirit, and will be able to resist and come against every onslaught from the pits of hell in Jesus' mighty name. When we're talking about cover, you need to realize that you require someone or something to cover you or to defend you or to do the con covering comprehensively because you need cover because you are exposed. We are vulnerable to risks. That is why the Bible says he shall cover you. That means that there are things, some elements going on all around us and you need a covering. And that covering can only be done by someone. You can't cover yourself. Something or someone has to cover you. And that person that covers us, the he in that scripture is our Lord and Master Jesus Christ who became a risk taker, a atoning sacrifice. He atoned for our sins. He is a mediator our advocate, our solicitor, intercessor, middleman, connector, defender, our defense, our negotiator. He's a fixer. He fixes everything. He can plead our case and our cause before God. And instead of judgment, he can plead mercy. It is only because of the mercy of God that we're still alive right now. And my prayer that will not run out of mercy in Jesus' mighty name. You know, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is no other effective cover that you can have but our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Because even though he became man, he was without sin. And the Bible tells us clearly in 1 Timothy 2.5, 1 Timothy 2.5, that there is one God and there is only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Jesus Christ. And it's so interesting that another scripture, Acts 4.12, Acts 4.12, it says, neither is there salvation in any other, not in any prophet, in any other man, in not, not an angel. It says, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's only the name of Jesus. It's only Jesus that can be a cover for us. And there's a scripture that I'm sure we all know in Revelation 1.5, Revelation 1.5, you know, when um, uh, um, the, 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 the heavens were opened and, uh, 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 and the, 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 the apostle uh, was standing before the throne of God. There was a book in the hand of God that had seals. And there was a, an angel proclaiming with the last a loud voice that is there any person worthy to open this the book in the hand of god and lose the seals and they didn't find any man not in heaven not in earth not under the earth that was able to open the book and of course the apostle was weeping that there was no man worthy but one of the elders in heaven told him not to weep he says ha the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seals. So we need to know that it is only Jesus that can be a perfect cover. There are all kinds of covers that people come up with. Some people do all kinds of rituals to cover themselves from accidents uh, and any other thing. But it can't work. It is only Jesus. That is the only comprehensive cover. 
And that is why what we are studying today is very, very important. And the covering that Jesus uses is his blood. That blood of Jesus was shed for you and I on Calvary 2,000 years ago. He needed to surrender his life and die in our stead. He shed his blood to buy back our lives from eternal perdition. You know, Leviticus 17, 11. Leviticus 17, 11 says, the life of every flesh is in the blood. Once you drain blood out, whether man or animal, they die. So it was a matter of life or life. In exchange for our lives, he had to die so that we who are dead in our trespasses could receive the life of God. And Paul says, the life we now live is the life of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Remember that Hebrews 9.22 says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So he had to shed his blood to forgive us our sins. You see, sin attracts judgment. It attracts sickness. The Bible says that the soul that sins will die. The angels of death flying all around. So if you remain in sin, it attracts, it attracts death, it attracts sickness, it attracts calamity. Remember that in John 5.14, John 5.14, after Jesus healed the man who had been sick for, for 38 years, Jesus told him, he says, go and sin no more, or else a worse thing will come upon you. So he was in that condition for 38 years because of sin. And Jesus says, if you continue to sin, something worse. What can be worse than 38 years of sickness? My prayer is that if you are listening to us on any of these platforms, if there is still sin in your life that is attracting the enemy, God will grant you the grace to let go of that sin in Jesus' mighty name. Remember, the Bible says that sin shall no longer have dominion over us. Sin breaks the hedge of protection and prevents God from helping us. That is what the Bible says in Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Isaiah 51, 9, 1 and 2. He says, look, the hand of God is not short that I can't see. His ear is not heavy that I cannot hear. It is because of sin. It separates us from God. My prayer is that as we go into this meeting tonight, that every remaining sin in our lives will be cleansed and washed away by the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. You see, the blood of Jesus is a spiritual cover and is a weapon of singular and mass destruction. It's so potent. And it's also a cleansing agent. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, 1 John 1, it says, if we confess our sins, it's faithful just to, to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He can clean you tonight, and I pray to clean you tonight, from sins in thoughts, in word, in deed, sins known and unknown. It's a cleansing agent. God uses the blood of Jesus to clean us up. And if you confess your sins and repent, he will clean you up. It's so potent that the Bible tells us in Isaiah 118, Isaiah 118, it says, come, even though your sins are, are scarlet, red, they shall be as white as snow. Even though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. There is nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot take care of. That's why this Holy Communion service tonight is a total, total, total deliverance service because we are concentrating on the spiritual cover, which is the blood of Jesus. People of God, when you are sick, I pray not. When somebody has malaria, they are giving malaria medications. Even COVID-19, it has COVID medications. If people have kidney problems, they have medications for kidney. If it's cancer, there are cancer medications. You cannot use cancer medication for malaria. It will cause trouble. But the blood of Jesus can take care of cancer. It can take 
care of poverty, it can take care of malaria, it can take care of COVID-19, it can take care of any disease or challenge. All you need is just one dose of the blood of Jesus. It is comprehensive. And I prophesy into your life that as we drink the blood of Jesus tonight, every challenge, every disease, known or unknown, will be totally cleansed today in Jesus' mighty name. Now, we believe that if we have asked for forgiveness and we plead the blood of Jesus and you have been cleansed, you are insulated from satanic attacks unless God permits the attack for a purpose like that he permitted for uh, Paul that he interceded, he prayed three times and God said, no, I needed to keep you calm because you can be proud because of all the great things I'm doing through you. Also, I love that message, Jesus Christ, even though he was innocent, he had to go through affliction so that we can be redeemed from perdition. So you can see sometimes affliction can come for a purpose because God wants to teach one a lesson by prophesying to your life every affliction, whether for a purpose or not, it will end today in Jesus' mighty name. You know, we have said that we are insulated by the blood of Jesus. And if you look at the meaning of insulation, it means to protect something by interposing a material that prevents loss of it or intrusion. It means to protect, to wrap around, to cover. When you say insulate, it means to cover, to shield, to separate, you know, it's an envelope. You need to understand that once you plead the blood of Jesus or you partake in the meal tonight, you are covered. You are shielded. You are shielded and insulated by the blood of Jesus. Nothing can penetrate. We need to walk in that revelation. The truth that you know shall set you free. There are examples in the Bible of the semblance of being covered or being insulated by the blood, even from attacks that nothing can come near. Your situation will be different. Even when men are saying that they're casting down or there's a problem, you will testify that, no, 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 I'm not seeing any problem. And I prophesy into your life that even though some people are saying already that this year is tough, there's a recession, there is death, the sickness all around, it will not come near you in Jesus' mighty name. Even though a thousand die by your side, 10,000 at your right hand, it will not come near you nor any member of your family in Jesus' mighty name because tonight you are receiving a lamination, insulation. If you are laminated or insulated or covered by the blood of Jesus, nothing can penetrate. Nothing can penetrate. And I prophesy into your life that from today, your sun will not go down. Your moon will not withdraw. God will bless you with the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Even if there's darkness in the whole world, as there is, the glory of God shall alight upon you and you will testify that all is in Jesus mighty name. Remember the night of the Passover in Egypt, there was death in the land from animals, firstborn of animals to the firstborn of Pharaoh. Everyone lost their firstborn, but because of the covering of the blood of, 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 of bulls, of rams, which is a type of the blood of Jesus. All the children of Israel that were indoors under the cover of that blood that was smeared on their lintels, the angel of death, the angel of destruction. He came near, but he could not penetrate because they were laminated. Once you laminate something, nothing can penetrate. It passed over them. That story, of course, you know it very well, is in Exodus 11, 7. And as we celebrate Passover tonight, my prayer is that through this meal, this Holy Communion, any remaining death this year, any remaining challenge, any remaining sickness, any remaining calamity this year will pass over you and pass over your family members in Jesus' mighty name because you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty and is covering you 
under the feathers of his wings. Remember, Paul was thrown into a pot of boiling water. He came out alive. Hot, boiling oil or boiling water. He came out alive. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. And the Bible also says, the rod of the wicked will not lie on the lot of right. I prophesy in your life that from today, the rod of the wicked will not lie on your lot in Jesus' mighty name. You see, the reason why we laminate certificates is to protect them from marks, from fingerprints, from stains, so that they remain white. And we need to realize that Satan has marks. He has blemishes. He has stains. If you read Revelation 13, 16 to 17, Revelation 13, 16 to 17, the Bible says that there is a mark of Satan in their right hand or their four heads. It's called the mark of the beast. It's a mark of failure. It's invisible. It's only visible to the spiritual world or when God opens your eyes. So you might not know, but Satan has a mark. Is a mark of failure, a mark of death, mark of rejection, mark of stagnation. It comes from him, mark of satanic delay in people's lives. For example, Job 10 14, Job 10 14, he says, If I sin, then you mark me. John 16 11 to 13, John 16 11 to 13, especially in verse 12, he says that he set up his mark. There is always a mark. And a mark is put on people so that they can be targets for attack. If you're an archer, there is a mark. You aim at the mark. But because we are partaking of the blood of Jesus tonight, every satanic mark will be wiped away in the name of Jesus Christ. Even if Satan shoots any arrow, he will miss because every mark will be blotted out. The Bible says in Colossians 2, 15, 14 to 15, it says, God will blot out every handwriting of ordinances that is against us, every satanic mark. He says he will take it away and nail it to the cross of Jesus. My prayer is that every satanic mark will be wiped away today in Jesus' mighty name. And the blood of Jesus will laminate us, will insulate us from attacks in Jesus' mighty name. Remember that when Haman was planning for Mordecai in the book of uh, uh, Esther, he was planning to kill them. It took one year of planning. When robbers want to rob homes, they do a recce, they, re they, they, they locate the place in, in advance. In Acts 12, 4, you know the story? James had been killed and they kept Peter. They put him aside and put a mark of death upon him that he was marked for death the next day. People of God, they wanted to kill him. But because he had another mark, the mark of Jesus, it canceled out the mark of Satan and he was delivered miraculously. I pray and prophesy that every mark of Satan upon our lives it will be cleansed out by the blood of Jesus today in Jesus' name. And every arrow shot on the piece of earth, it will miss its point. The Bible says that they will not be able to perform their enterprise. It will fail in Jesus' mighty name. The blood of Jesus will remove every satanic mark in your life, in your body, in your career, in your children, in your future, concerning your business, concerning your destiny. That mark is removed today as we partake in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, when we're talking about marks, remember that Cain, he begged God in Genesis 4, 15. He says, please put a mark on me, and God put a mark on him so that anyone coming and finding me will not be able to kill him. Every child of Israel on that Passover night, they had a mark on top of their homes, and he protected them from every destruction. Exodus 12, 13, Exodus 12, 13, it says, and the blood shall be to you for a token, a sign upon your homes where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you 
and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land. I prophesy into your life that because of the blood of judgment, we plead over everyone under the sound of my voice. Now and hereafter, we plead the blood of Jesus. We prophesy that no plague will come near you. No weapon fighting against you shall prosper. No sickness will come near you. It shall be well with you. God will insulate you in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, the blood on their doorsteps, Exodus 12, 13, he says, but the blood on your doorsteps will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are staying. I plead the blood of Jesus over you that the blood of Jesus will mark your lives, mark your family, mark your body, mark your business, mark your dwelling places, mark your possessions, so that no evil will come near you in Jesus' name. It has been done before, and I prophesy in your life that it shall be done again tonight in Jesus' name. Because of the mark of Jesus that you will receive tonight, no evil, no calamity will come near you in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, in Revelation 7.3, Revelation 7.3, God said that they should not hurt anybody until they are put a mark on the heads of the children of God. He said, put a seal on their foreheads. And that is why Paul confidently said in Galatians 6, 17, he says, from now, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord, our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. And I prophesy in your life that that mark will remain upon you in Jesus' name. And as you call upon the name of God, he will answer you. You that have been forsaken before, you will be sought out in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes in spite of, you know, the mark, the covering, satanic attacks might still come. But if it comes for those that are sick or whatever, or they're under one challenge or attack, uh, or, or another will prophesy that victory will be assured in Jesus' mighty name. No sickness will take you out. No challenge will take you out. In Acts 28, 4 to 6, Acts 28, 4 to 6, after a shipwreck, a, a viper came and beat Paul, and they thought he would die. But no way, he had that man. He shook it off into the, the fire. And they said, ah, 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 this man must be a god. And indeed, we are gods. Exodus 7, 1. Exodus 7, 1. God made Moses a god unto Pharaoh. And Jesus said in John 10, 34, he says, ye are gods. The blood of Jesus flows inside us. I prophesy in your life that as you partake tonight, God will make you a God even unto all your problems and adversaries. And as you decree a thing, it shall be established in Jesus' name. Whatever you say shall go, shall go. Whatever you say shall come, shall come. Satanic agenda is to kill, to steal, to destroy, to tear up your marriage, your dreams, to break lives, you know, your business and, uh, and every other thing. But he will fail tonight because the truth has been revealed by God and the truth of God will make us free in Jesus' mighty name. Now that you know that it's impossible to tear a laminated piece of paper, how much more your life that is laminated with the blood of Jesus, your story has changed tonight in Jesus' mighty name. You are the one to tear down the kingdom of darkness. Jeremiah 1.10, God told Jeremiah, see, I have set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down. I prophesy in your life that whatever you pull down today will remain pulled down. Whatever you destroy today will remain destroyed. Whatever you throw down today will remain thrown down because you are operating supernaturally under the unction and the anointing of the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit of God. From today, you are empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. You will function in the office of a priest and a king today. And whatever you pull down remains pulled down forever in Jesus' name. Jesus told us that we will tread upon lion, we will tread upon adder, and nothing shall in no wise harm us. So shall it be from today in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter if attacks come. Fear not. God is more than able to protect us. 
And if you know the truth, you will resist the devil and he must free from you in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, tonight is a great night. And God wants to set a mark upon you. In Ezekiel 9, 46, Ezekiel 9, 46, the Bible says that God wants to set a mark to separate and distinguish his own. He says there is death coming in that scripture. He says, slay every other person, but don't come near anyone that has the Lord's mark. If you are here under the sound of my voice, and you are not born again, you are still toying with sin, you are not sure of your stand. You don't have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. You have never taken an altar call, or you are just a thing, and you know you lie, you do all kinds of things, your thought life is not great. God cannot hear an unconfessed sinner, and he cannot mark a sinner. Christ has paid for your sin. So that we can be protected, you need that mark of Christ. He says that mark was distinguished. And I pray that if you're not born again tonight, you could repeat after me so I can receive that mark. And then we're going to pray some dangerous prayers. And God will ensure that you are covered by Him in Jesus' mighty name. So if you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. All have sinned and come short of your glory. Please, with my mouth, I confess tonight that I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life to cleanse me of every kind of unrighteousness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Change my heart from a disobedient heart to a heart that obeys you. Please set your mark upon me to distinguish me, to separate me, to protect me and protect my family. Set your mark upon me tonight, O oh Lord, the mark of the blood of Jesus, so that no evil will come near me. Write my name in the book of life and make me brand new. If you said that prayer, welcome to the family of God. There's some numbers scrolling under right now. Please call them and they'll tell you more about what you have done. Now we are going to go into the Holy Communion service proper and want to pray on the elements. Please get your elements. And I want to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as I lay my hands upon these elements, the bread, Father, we pray that it be turned miraculously to the body of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ that was broken for us. The wine, we sanctify it, and we pray that it be turned to the blood of Jesus. And as we partake tonight, Father, cover us, bless us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are going to drink, and then we are going to pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, the same night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat the body of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now that we have flowing throughout the blood of Jesus, it just shall live by faith, we want to pray. Now say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I plead the blood of Jesus as a comprehensive cover and lamination over my life, over my family, over my children, over my ministry, over my business, over my destiny, and against every attack of the enemy. I prophesy that no attack, no arrow from the peace of air will penetrate me in Jesus' name. I come against every satanic weapon programmed against me 
against my family, against my business. It will fail in Jesus' my name. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus to speak destruction to every unrepentant enemy of my soul, enemy of my destiny. In Jesus' my name, lift up that prayer point, and so shall it be in Jesus' my name. We say, Father, I speak healing in the blood of Jesus to my body and protection to my family in Jesus' my name. By the blood of the Lamb, no evil will befall me. No plague shall come near my dwelling place in Jesus' my name. Because I'm covered and I'm laminated, even in Jesus' my name. I'm insulated from every attack of the enemy in Jesus' my name. Say, Father, let the blood of Jesus bring back to life everything that is dead within me. Dead business, dead relationship, dead career, dead dreams failing organs, I decree that the resurrection power of our Lord and Master Jesus will come upon my body and all my dreams will come back to life. Every dead potential will be activated in Jesus' name. Say, Father, let the blood of Jesus reactivate and revive every dead potential and spiritual gifts within me in Jesus' name. Lift up that prayer point. Every dead potential, every spiritual gift that is not working, begin to pray that God will stir it up by the power of the Holy Spirit. Say, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus to flush out of me all inherited or self-acquired evil deposits in my system. I plead the blood of Jesus to purify my bloodstream in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that needs to be replaced in my body, from my kidneys to my heart, every failing organ, I command you, I say, hear ye the word of God. Receive the life of God right now in Jesus' my name. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Say, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus that all things have passed away in my life. All things have become new. All those things that used to cause me to sigh, to weep, I command you. I say, go right now, never to return in Jesus' my name. Our Lord will change for the better today in Jesus' my name. Say, Father, I apply the blood of Jesus to every stubborn problem in my life. I proclaim victory over sin, victory over Satan, demonic agents of Satan in my life. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, redeem me from the hand of the enemy. I defeat, I paralyze every spirit of demotion by the blood of the Lamb. Every spirit that brings financial downgrading, I come against you. Every spirit that brings failure at the verge of breakthrough, I come against you. Every vision killers, every inherited problem, I come against you by the blood of Jesus Christ. I overcome you by the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus over my household to draw a boundary of protection around my children, around my family, around my property, around everything that God has given me. Let the blood of Jesus speak confusion to the camp of the enemy. Even though they gather, God will scatter them. Let it speak destruction to every unbroken evil cycle in my life. I come against barrenness. I come against stagnation. I say things will begin to work. All those that are believing God for an intervention right now, receive it in Jesus' name. Say, Father, I decree. I say, let the blood of Jesus speak peace to every troubled marriage, every troubled relationship. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against satanic delay. No more delay. Our girls will marry. Our men will marry. No more delay. No more barrenness in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray the blood of Jesus to speak better things than the blood of Abel. Amen. I speak the blood of Jesus to speak prosperity, healing, deliverance, goodness, mercy, fulfillment of dreams in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, I pray the blood of Jesus to grant us access. Every closed door we command open right now. I pray the blood of Jesus to speak mercy, mercy. Father, have mercy upon us. I pray the blood of Jesus to speak healing. Everyone that is sick, we say receive the healing power of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus to speak victory, deliverance. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Father, we want to thank you. We bless you. We glorify thee. Thank you, O Lord, for the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the mark of Christ upon us. Thank you for the covering that you have given us. Thank you for the confidence that we will testify. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The blood of Jesus, 
The blood of Jesus set me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus set me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set me free. Go in this confidence. It is well with you. God bless you. We love you. See you next time. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Indeed, we thank God for his word unto us today and indeed the fact that we have take, partaken of the Holy Communion and we're marked by the blood of Jesus and none shall trouble us because we bear the mark of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we prepare our tithes and our offerings. And if you just go with me to Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12, you can read from verse 41 to 44 in your time uh, and it's a story of the widow who gave the two small coins or the two widow's mites and one of the things that i find striking about that uh, passage is jesus statement in verse 43 the bible says i'm reading from the new living translation jesus called his disciples to him and said i tell you the truth this poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions for they gave a tiny part of their surplus but she poor as she is has given everything she had to give. The New Life version says she is poor, and yet she gave all she had, even what she needed for her own living. So your offering tonight should not only be an offering, because there were other people there giving an offering. Jesus was looking at everyone uh, with rapt attention, but she gave something, not a, a high amount, but a value of her sacrifice was what uh, God looked at, and she was marked. And I want to just pinpoint what God marked her for. Number one, she drew God's rapt attention. Everybody else I was given, God was looking at, but she drew God's rapt attention. God opened the heavens for her and marked her for heavenly attention because Jesus Christ drew the attention of the disciples to her. God would indeed mark you as you have uh, taken the Holy Communion tonight, <laughs> listen to his word, and as you give your sacrificial offering, God will mark you for heavenly attention, for renown, for praise, and for glory, and for full restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. And one thing that I find most moving in this is Isaiah 60, 15. Isaiah 60, 15. It, it says, I will make you the everlasting pride, the new international version says, and the joy of all generations. NLT says, I will make you beautiful forever, a joy to all generations. The King James says, I will make up an eternal excellence. This woman, despite the fact that there were many people probably given a larger amount than she gave, but God made her an eternal excellence as a benchmark for you and I to learn the kind of offering that God appreciates. So uh, you will see uh, possibly below the screen the uh, account details. If you're given online, please kindly just uh, right away uh, look at those uh, that information and give that sacrificial offering. Remember the value of your sacrifice, not necessarily the value of the amount, but the value of your sacrifice is what God is looking at. And God will bless you mightily as we give. And so we'll just pray. Father, we just thank you for your word unto us, Lord God. We thank you for your son, Father. We thank you for increased anointing and replenishment upon his life. Even as we have given sacrificially tonight, Father God, our tithes and offering, Father God, we thank you that you have marked us, Lord God, for heavenly attention. You've marked us to be an eternal excellence. You've drawn, Father God, indeed, advertised us that anywhere we go, because we bear the mark of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we will have your favor, we will have your accelerated progress, and we will have your protection always, all through this year and beyond, in Jesus' tarries. We give you praise and honor, Father, for we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the morning when I wake up, I know your love was there.
special in my heart for you It's a song of praise for you My maker, I know, I know I know that you love, love to be praised And as you're singing, you are singing with us Rejoicing over us, we're singing Thank you. 